Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Wildlife Wednesday. Uh, today, on World Tigers Day, we are going to be talking about tigers. Uh, my name is Heather, and I'm a senior specialist with our freshwater team here at WWF Canada. I've been with WWF for eight years now, and I've been so lucky to get to work on a variety of really cool projects. And one of the coolest things that I've ever had the privilege of doing is actually traveling to Nepal and meeting with WWF Nepal staff who are working on our tiger conservation project on the ground. It was really incredible to meet the communities and talk to the people who are doing this really important work and learn how they're making a difference for tiger populations. Um, and you might be wondering, why, why World Tiger Day? Why are we celebrating this? Well, a decade ago in 2010, wild tiger numbers were at an all-time low. And that year marked the beginning of one of the biggest single species conservation commitments in history. And that was to double the global wild tiger population by 2022. And that's an initiative that became known as T times two. And actually in 2016, the global population of tigers rose for the first time in a century, signs that this initiative is working. And today the tiger is making a comeback in five countries, Bhutan, China, India, Nepal, and Russia. And that's good news for tigers and people. As a keystone species, bringing back tigers will also save the ecosystems that we all depend on. And now I am so thrilled to introduce our big cats expert, Rinjin, who is going to share all his knowledge about tigers. Hi, Rinjin. How are you today? Hi, good. Uh, thanks. Thanks for a wonderful introduction, Heather. Thank you. Um, happy Global Tigers Day to you. And you uh, as well. <laughs> yeah, and to our participants here. Hello, everyone. Well, as uh, Heather has mentioned, I am uh, WWF Canada's big cats guy. I'm trained as a wildlife biologist, and I'm currently associated with the science, knowledge, and innovation team here at World Wildlife Fund Canada. My primary role is to assist uh, WWF's effort of saving big cats, including tigers, leopards, and lions. And although I have been working with big cats for the past 25 years, I'm still finding that there are so many things to learn about. Every time I visit the land of tigers, I get surprises as something new comes up. And this continuous learning opportunity from wildlife, as well as from the local people who live in and around tiger lands, always inspire me, really. That's, that's amazing. Um, tell us more about your work. I can't wait to hear more. Well, uh, Heather, uh, speaking of my work, I would uh, particularly like to highlight uh, the way that we um, uh, trick tigers uh, to check uh, their uh, selfies uh, using <laughs> what is known as the camera trap technique. I like that. <laughs> you see, uh, this technique is actually one of the most uh, popular methods uh, to count uh, tiger numbers out in the wild. Uh, and to do so, actually, we place uh, aromatic cameras uh, fitted with heat and motion sensors uh, in strategic locations where tigers are most likely to visit. And these cameras take pictures uh, as soon as a tiger and other animal comes uh, within uh, the focal range. So this video actually was uh, taken by one of the camera traps. And the pictures taken by uh, these cameras will be uh, scanned uh, to identify uh, individual uh, tigers, thanks to the unique uh, stripe pattern on their uh, body coat that acts just like our fingerprints and uh, which allows for uh, individual identification. That's so cool. Um, I have more questions about tigers for you, but uh, for everyone who's participating, do feel free to put your questions in the comments and we'll hopefully be able to get to them. Um, but in the meantime, Rinjin, can you tell us where tigers are found? Do they prefer to live in hot climates or cold climates? Oh, for sure. Uh, you know, tigers are found in uh, 13 Asian countries. Uh, actually, they are native to Asia. And um, their range actually stretches uh, from Indian subcontinent, uh, the Indo-Chinese uh, peninsula to Sumatra and up far as, uh, uh, to, uh, as far as Russian, uh, Russian Far East. And regarding uh, the, their temperature tolerance, actually, they are found in wide range of temperatures, both hot and cold climates. For instance, uh, Amur tiger or Siberian tiger, uh, they are, are found 
temperatures as low as negative 40 degrees Celsius. And the Bengal tigers call home to the mangrove swamps of Sundarbon, Sundarbans in India and uh, Bangladesh, where the temperatures reach uh, more than uh, positive 40 degrees Celsius. Oh, whoa. So huge yeah. range. Very adaptable, it sounds That's like. Um, how big do they get? Uh, tigers actually, you know, their body size varies depending upon uh, subspecies and sex. Uh, male uh, tigers are usually bigger than uh, female, and uh, also um, uh, subspecies. For instance, uh, the largest ones are the Amur and Bengal tigers with a body length of uh, up to four meter and weight up to 300 kg. Uh, and the smallest tigers are, um, uh, you know, Sumatran tigers. Uh, they are found in Sumatra. And uh, uh, speaking of their uh, lifespan, they are known uh, to live up to 20 years um, in the wild. Oh, wow. How many cubs do they generally, generally have? Oh, yeah. Tigers are actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, prolific uh, breeders. Uh, they can have as many as seven cubs in litter, but that is uh, rare. Uh, usually, uh, they uh, will have uh, two to four cubs in one litter, but not all cubs would survive uh, uh, to, to adults. Uh, only half of them survive, survive beyond the uh, uh, two years of age. Wow. So, I mean, they get pretty large they have you know a fair number of cubs what do they eat they must need a lot of food to keep them healthy yeah actually tigers have wide range of diet but they prefer you know uh, large uh, hoofed uh, mammals uh, such as um, uh, deer wild pig uh, and sometimes they also uh, you know uh, prey upon uh, domestic livestock uh, like goats and sheep buffalo cow Yes, so uh, they 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 can really eat. Actually, they can eat uh, you know twenty to twenty cases of meat in one meal, uh, uh, and also when they make a kill, uh, they stay with uh, with their kill uh, for up to four or five days. Uh, so they um, uh, they uh, hunt you know uh, once a week uh, or uh, once in ten days. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, Rinjin, what would what would you say are the main threats to tigers? Uh, tigers actually are facing lots of threat, um, mostly, you know, human induced threats. I would say poaching uh, is the first and foremost um, threat, decline, driving their population decline. Uh, you uh, you see recent uh, WWF traffic actually traffic report um, what was published in 2018 and the data using from 2010 to 2018 suggests that around 124 tigers uh, are uh, being lost uh, to poachers uh, every year. Wow. That's a massive number. And recent report on snaring crisis in South Asia also um, shows uh, you know really. Uh, mind blowing, actually, dramatic scenes of 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 poachers using snaring, snares. So um, poaching is the first most uh, first uh, threat, and second would be, I guess, habitat loss, because you know tiger habitats are also one of the most uh, productive lands for crop uh, crop cultivation. So humans often compete with tigers. Um, uh, they encroach upon tiger habitats. Uh, so tiger habitat has now actually mm, uh, uh, gone down by 96 uh, percent uh, over a century. So we've got only 4 percent of historic uh, uh, tiger range. Uh, so uh, and it also it is also fragmenting or isolating tiger habitats, which is having really you know dear as in uh, negative actually uh, consequences to their uh, survival wow uh so i want to get to some questions from the audience but before i do that um how is wwf working to conserve tiger habitat and protect tigers uh, 
you see wwf uh, is uh, is is really well positioned to uh, to work on uh, tigers because it has got uh, underground presence in almost all the tiger range countries and we've been uh, working uh, to achieve uh, the, the ambitious but you know attainable goal of doubling uh, doubling the tiger numbers by uh, the year 2022 so uh, in doing so uh, we are assisting tiger range countries uh, to impl implement national tiger population recovery plans and strengthen enforcement networks protect and connect tiger landscapes and galvanize political will and in doing so, actually, we are uh, engaging local communities, uh, as, and then we are following actually, um, uh, you know, uh, and the local communities are uh, local people, uh, mostly indigenous people, are helping us to imp uh, to to implement wide range of uh, projects uh, target, uh, uh, targeted targeted towards achieving. Uh, T times two goal, which is doubling the tiger numbers by the year 2022. S to talk about uh, uh, specifically about WWF Canada, we've been working in uh, in in Nepal um, uh, with our uh, you know uh, government count, uh, count, uh, counterparts, local uh, w uh, country WWF office, a program office, and also other NGOs in Nepal. And Nepal has actually um, uh, 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 now uh, the, the population of when we started back in 2010, the population, tiger population then was around 125. Now we um, it, it, it has reached up to 235. So we are pretty close to doubling the wild tiger number in Nepal. That's fantastic. Um, I'm really excited to hear that. Um, now I'm gonna turn it over to some questions that we have coming in. Um, so Jeff wants to know, how big are tiger's claws? Oh, that's uh, a tricky question. Again, it depends on uh, sex and you know uh, subspecies. Uh, so there are, I mean, uh, that, and one thing before I uh, answer this question, you know, tiger's claws actually is not, it's normally not visible when they attack, when they uh, uh, sense some fear, then uh, uh, that claws come out. So the, it will be, uh, the length would be around uh, three to four inches. It's like house cats. Claws come out when they're exactly exactly <laughs> yeah yeah. Um, Holly is wondering, on average, at what age do cubs begin to hunt for prey? Oh, that's a good question, actually, Holly. Um, the prey they start to hunt when they uh, become about eight, eight to nine uh, months uh, uh, old. Actually, you know, but, but prior to that, uh, they, but they will be accompanying their mother actually, and also prior to that that. Uh, when they get about six months old, uh, their mother uh, starts uh, to teach um, the cubs to hunt. That's very cool. Um, we'll do a couple more. Um, do tigers prey on rhinos and on elephants? Normally, don't. Uh, they don't. Uh, but uh, you know, baby elephant or uh, baby rhinos. Occasionally, maybe, but when uh, tigers are um, uh, tigers are uh, you know uh, they uh, just go away when they see a rhino and and um, specifically elef elephant. Uh, they don't actually uh, prey uh, the other elephants and other rhinos. Okay, we'll do one more audience question, and then I hope everyone's getting warmed up for some trivia that we have coming up. But uh, last question is, Justin wants to know, why do tigers have white spots on the back of their ears? Oh, you know, uh, that's uh, one of the intriguing aspect of tiger uh, morphology. You see, um, every tiger would have uh, black, two black white spots on the back of their ear. And the scientists, tiger biologists, are, have always wondered about it. But we, uh, unfortunately, we really do not have any definitive answer. And um, But people often hypothesize that, you know, it could be, um, uh, you know, used uh, to help uh, tiger cubs uh, to follow uh, their mother when they venture into uh, tall uh, grasslands. Lots, lots to learn, lots of opportunity yeah. to continue learning about tigers. Um, that's fantastic. 
Uh, okay, now let's move on to some Tiger trivia. Um, we will ask you four questions and feel free to toss your answers into the comments. Uh, let's see, let's test your Tiger knowledge. So first question. What percentage of hunting attempts are successful for tigers? Is it A, less than 10%, B, 20 to 50%, or C, greater than 50%? Oh, you see, uh, tigers, they have to work really hard in order to make a successful hunt because their prey are also equally smart. They can, you know, tigers hunt usually by ambushing their prey and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, they do not get successful. As uh, most often, uh, often times, prey would uh, just outsmart tiger. All right, yeah. got some guesses coming in. Yeah. The answer is A, less than ten percent. A few of you guys got that. Great work. Um, you guys are tiger experts. We have a next question coming up soon. Be sure to put your responses in the comments. Okay, hey, a tiger's roar can reach up to 114 decibels. How much louder is this than a lawnmower? Is it A, 10 times louder, B, 25 times louder, or C, 50 times louder? Oh, Heather, you see, I have heard tigers uh, roar a uh, uh, couple of times. Uh, uh, they can be really loud. Uh, they, you know, uh, they are really loud. Uh, so we've got Jennifer is saying B and uh, Kaylee, yay, yeah. Yeah, we got some guesses coming in. Yeah. I've, I've heard yeah. a tiger roar in real life before too. It's incredible. <laughs> okay, the answer is B, 25 times louder than a lawnmower. I believe that, Rinjin, I don't know if you agree, but hearing it yeah, in sure. person, it like, shocks you to your, to your core. <laughs> It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Clement says it depends on the lawnmower model. Good point. <laughs> Next question. What does a tiger's urine smell like? Is it A, basmati rice? Is it B, buttered popcorn? Or C, Coca-Cola? Oh, this is also another interesting uh, aspect of tiger uh, biology, actually. They use uh, their urine or scent marks as their, uh, you know, uh, business card. Uh, because it tells the other tiger about uh, the reproductive status, sex, and age of uh, the tiger who has left their urine. And it smells really good, you know, because uh, that is... Uh, uh, so you guys, I, I'll, I'll leave it at the guest after you guys. <laughs> we have some people guessing B. The answer is B, buttered popcorn. I never would have thought that. It's never, I mean... Who talks about urine smelling like buttered popcorn? We do. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, it's very cool. I like how you refer to it as their business card. Okay. Last question coming up. We have, how much better than humans is a tiger's night vision? Is it A, two times better? Is it B, four times better? Or is it C, six times better? Tigers, uh, you know, they should have better night vision um, than uh, because, you know, they mostly hunt uh, during night time. Uh, they do have better night vision, really good night vision, but they are not, you know, this is, it is a kind of paradox that they are not very much successful in making a, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in making a kill, like we said, once in every uh, 10 or 20 att attempts. Mm -hmm. Let's see. The answer is C, six times better. And a lot of you guessed that in the comments. So congratulations. You guys are tiger experts. Um, and feel free yeah. to tally up your scores and toss those in the comments so we can see how everyone did. Um, with that, unfortunately, we're coming to an end of our Wildlife Wednesday. It's been really, really great to chat with you. And again, happy World Tigers Day to you, Rinjin. To you too, as well.
Thank you. Uh, just a reminder that we are moving towards doing Wildlife Wednesdays once a month. So please join us every the last Wednesday of the month. And uh, feel free to let us know if you have a species that you're interested in learning more about, toss it in the comments, send us a note, uh, and maybe we'll feature it at our next Wildlife Wednesday. Um, other than that, thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys.